Uh, so this is a fraction, and we have uh, the method that creates the data for the fraction. Uh, now let's add a more useful method. If we just print uh, f1, uh, let's see what happens. So you'll see it, it printed 1 and 2. Those are the first two prints. And then when it said to print f1, it just prints main dot fraction object at, and it gives a, uh, well, this is actually a hexadecimal number representing a place in memory. And that's actually the unique number that represents the place in memory where the object is. That's why it says object at this place in memory. Uh, main is actually the name that stands for our current file or current module. And so uh, fraction is defined in this module, so this is a reference to that. So that's, it's not very useful that it prints this. I mean, we can see we have a fraction object, so you can see the type, and you can see where it is. That's about all the information you want. Now, what would you like to happen? This is what the magic methods are for. So when you print something, what print does is it looks at this object, and it, and it basically calls the thing to say, how do you want to represent yourself as a string, as, as a fraction object? So if you want to actually have something different than this, you have to define that method. So that's called the REPL method. T-E-F-R-E-P-R, -E -E or representation method. So it's a magic method. I just hit enter. And then we will want to return a string that represents how we would want, we would want fractions to look. So what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to uh, make a string where we convert the uh, self.num to a string, oops, and then we concatenate that with a slash, and then we concatenate that with the, uh, the uh, numerator. Now you may get right now that anytime you want to refer to the actual data that belongs to the object, you have to preface it with self because the data always is part of the object. And the object, the current object, is always, is always pointed to by self. So self, you can think of when you get into this method, self will always be whatever was before the dot that invoked it. So we're going to invoke F1 here. So when it comes into here, F1 is going to refer to, uh, is self is going to refer to whatever F1 was when it, when it came in. And so now this is going to return the, the numerator of F1 and the denominator F1. Uh, so now let's see if this works. And so it should print, see it prints one half. So we have some more useful things. Um, so those are some basics here. Now uh, you can see that's what they did here. They call top and bottom. So you can name your parameters, uh, and this we haven't done yet. So let's go modify it to match this. So the way we have it now, every time we create a fraction, it just creates one half. What we'd like to specify, so in the, in the initializer, you can specify arguments that you want to expect uh, the parameters to fill in. So, or, so we'll say top, uh, comma, bottom. And instead of setting uh, numerator to one, we'll set it to top. And instead of denominator to two, we'll set it to bottom. Uh, so now, instead of doing new fraction with no parameters, we'll say, well, let's just do two-thirds. And we'll run it. And you can see it creates it, and there's the numerator denominator, and here's it represented as a string, uh, two-thirds. Now, there's a different operator if I say I want to convert f1 to a string. So I'm going to say uh, s is equal to... Uh, str f1. F, str converts something to a string. So this is asking this object to convert itself to a string and let's output s and let's see what it does. So we do that and it works. So this repr, if you define that, it will, it will tell it basically this is how I convert myself to a string. So that's an important thing to add. So here's a picture in the book. So when you actually make a fraction object, it basically points to this fraction. And you have this is the same diagram we saw early in the book. 
you have the interface, which are the methods of how you talk to the fraction, and then you have the internal data, which is the state of that object. So here that shows you uh, creating a fraction, printing it out, and it prints this, and then they talk about how to correct that. So they add, uh, they first they do print, which is fine, but it's not doesn't work in all situations, and then they talk about uh, STR, but what you really should use is that RE. Uh, PR, this one, which is the magic method for that. It turns out this string method will call this automatically. Oh, well, I just referred to some method that we never defined. So let me go back up a little bit. Uh, so when you actually define a fraction, uh, fractions actually, whenever you define any class, uh, if you don't specify, that class inherits some pre-existing code and possibly pre-existing data. And if you don't specify, it inherits it from a special class called the object class. And in fact, in some uh, tutorials you'll see they, they'll reference object here. I think it's capitalized. No, it's a small case. So this is how when you, when you define a class, you can say, I want this class to inherit from this other class. And we'll talk more about inheritance but we'll just point out that there's a bunch of methods that, that automatically def are defined for your class. If you don't define them, one of them is uh, STR. So I can define STR like they do in the book, but when I define this, STR actually calls this one, so that will, that will give you the correct behavior. Uh, in the book, he doesn't uh, s implicitly spell out that fraction is inherited from object, because if you don't specify it, it automatically is which you'll see in a lot of new, newer books, they like to always put that in. So now there's a lot of other matching methods. So let's suppose you want to add two fractions. You want to have a fraction F1 and F2, and you want to add them together. Uh, you have to define the add method. So now you can call these methods directly. So if you want to add F1 and F2 and you've defined this method, you can do that. But the whole point of a magic method is when you use the plus operator and it sees a, an object on the left, it's going to call that magic method that's related to the plus operator on the object on the left and it's going to pass the object on the right as a parameter. So it actually ends up making a call like this when you use the plus operator. Um, now, so how do you actually do addition for, uh, so now we have to go into the math of this. So if you want to add two fractions, uh, if you remember, you have to have a common denominator, and then you can just add the numerators together. So first you have to change these so they have a common denominator. So a little bit of math, if you multiply uh, the same value on the top and the bottom, you have the same basic fraction. So you multiply uh, B by D and A by D, so the bottom becomes BD. And the second one, you multiply D by B and C by B, so you're multiplying the top and bottom by the same thing, and then you get uh, DB on the bottom. At the top you'll have AD and CB, and then you add these two top things together and you get that, and that will give us uh, the right answer. So to actually implement this, uh, the add operator self is the uh, left hand side of the plus is passed as self, that's the current object, and then the right hand side of the plus is passed as a parameter, so that's the F2 would come in as other fraction, and so then you do this math that's indicated up here. So they take the numerator of self um, times the other fraction's denominator plus self uh, denominator times the other fraction's numerator, and that gives you us the new numerator, so they're just doing this right here, and they set the new denominator as self denominator times the other fraction's denominator. Uh, so let's go ahead and do this. So I'm going to add that to what I'm building. Here. Okay, take off this little extra. So now we can add two fractions. So let's make two fractions. Let's add two thirds equal fraction and one half.
So we'll say uh, f3 is equal to f1 plus f2. And then let's print f3. And we'll run it. And you'll see it says 7, 6. So is it correct? Well, let's see. We multiply the two denominators. We get 6, so it has the right denominator. And then you can figure out it is correct for the top part. It's actually 3 times 1 plus 2 times 2, so that's 4 plus 3, so that's 7, 6. Now, is there a problem with this? Yes, it's not. Uh, it's Well, that, that's not a problem with this. Let's do another fraction. So what I'm going to do, let's do 1 half by... Let's see. Let's do one quarter and one half, which will be good. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and run it. All right, so now you can see it comes with six eighths. The problem with this, it's not reduced. If you remember fractions, this, we would rather see this as three quarters, not six eighths. Uh, 